Hey guys, today I'm filming my fall favorites for 2020 and I'm excited because I actually have a decent amount of products to share with you and I really feel like all of these were some standout products for me this season and at the end I am also going to be including the clip from our gender reveal that just happened yesterday as of the day I'm filming this and I wanted to give you a little bit of a pregnancy update so that's going to be at the end for those that are not interested I'll do the gender reveal and then the pregnancy update so let's just get started with the makeup products and the first two products that I tried and really fell in love with would be two new foundations which is very exciting because as much as I like to try new foundations I feel like I haven't really fallen in love with something in a while but both of these are amazing. So the first one is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation, the matte version. I tried the original last year and I loved the way that it looked on the skin, but it was not long wearing at all. And this one definitely is. And I already talked a little bit about this, so I'll just keep it brief. I told you what the differences were between this and the It Cosmetics Matte CC Cream. That one is a lot thicker. It's more of a moussey texture. This feels like a like liquidy cream foundation and it blends into the skin really nicely. I am able to build it slightly, but it's not the most buildable. This definitely gives more of a solid medium coverage. I have a lot of acne right now and my blemishes are showing through, but I just put a blemish concealer on top. But this gives great coverage. It's nice and mattifying without looking too dry. It holds up all day on me and it just looks healthy. It looks natural. It looks so, so beautiful on the skin. This is a great everyday foundation and it's not so drying or mattifying that I don't think it could work well for other skin types, but I'm absolutely in love with this. The texture is great and it just looks beautiful on the skin. I have the shade Fair. It's a little dark for me, so I do need to use a little bit of a lightener. I really wish it Cosmetics would continue to work on expanding their shade selection, but I really love this product. I'm so happy that I have it. Then we've got a full coverage foundation, which is what I'm wearing. And my other favorite is a full coverage foundation that I'm wearing it today. This is just a little deluxe sample of the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I have the shade Mont Blanc, a little dark for me, a little too peachy neutral so I do have to mix in a lightener with this as well. I did recently just purchase this in the full size in a different shade. I'm hoping that it matches me because they actually I think have fewer shades in this foundation range than they do in their other ranges so hopefully I got a good color. I'm definitely going to test it out. This is very full coverage and it's very flat matte and the first time I tried it I think I kind of like waited a while to set my face and maybe to blend it out and I was like oh wow this is showing like every line every pore it's too flat but since then I've used it several times I'm not having that issue I think it definitely can depend on the primer that you're using as well as the skincare products you have underneath but it is very long wearing it's very mattifying I think it looks like very perfecting and because it is so matte you can see the texture of my blemishes a little bit more but I also feel like if I use something overly dewy I can also see like different imperfections so there's no perfect foundation out there but I'm wearing this today and I love it I think it looks great like I said it holds up really really well I did hear someone say that this is supposed to be like an anti-oxidizing foundation it does oxidize on me a little bit not bad and it's really like it doesn't oxidize throughout the day it oxidizes like right after I blend it out so that's not bad I would rather it be at the beginning of my makeup application so I can fix it than something that happens throughout the day but absolutely in love with both of these basically like I said this one has more like a medium coverage more of a natural look to the skin and this is full coverage flat matte finish but I freaking love it but I know a lot of people have not liked this so if you're dry or normal I don't think so but if you're oily it's good so I'm so so happy with both of these foundations and I really haven't found a new foundation that I've really loved in a while so I'm super happy with both of those and then I have a bunch of ColourPop favorites, which is exciting. ColourPop is still one of my favorite brands, but I've definitely fallen out of love a bit over the years. So 
I have this eyeshadow duo that I wore at like the very beginning of fall. I'll try to remember what video that was and link it for you guys. But on my lid, I was wearing the Super Shock Shadow in Moonwalk, which is a pearlized finish. And this is a beautiful green color, but it has like a dirty peachy orange flash to it, which I think is so unique. And you can definitely see it when you swatch it. You can see a lot more of that peachy base and it looks very green in the packaging. So it's so, so pretty. I'm gonna add another layer on there. It's just so unique. And then in the crease, I was using a ColourPop pressed powder shadow. And I've mentioned before, I don't think that the ColourPop singles are as good as the eyeshadows in the palettes. However, that mostly pertains to the shimmers. I find the shimmers particularly flaky, but I feel like the mattes are still pretty good quality. So this color is Koi, which really <laughs> looks like mac and cheese powder. It looks to me like it's showing up a bit more orange on camera and it definitely has more yellow in it in person. And this is a very rich eyeshadow. So it actually was able to add some nice depth in the crease. Like I said, I'll have to include the link of the video where I wore this, but I absolutely love the way it looks. And it's my first time trying that combo. And both of these were neglected shadows of mine and I loved the way that they looked together. So definitely recommend the both of those. Then for the first time, then for the first time I used the ColourPop Whatever palette. And I know a lot of people really love this one. So I was excited to finally use it. These colors are definitely up my alley and I'm glad that the shades aren't like as red as Modern Renaissance. They're similar but not the same. We've got one pressed glitter in here and then the rest are like shimmers, super shocks, and matte. Thankfully only one pressed glitter. Colourpop needs to cut it out. I feel like 95% of us hate the pressed glitters. Like just make one entirely pressed glitter palette and then like cut it out. But this is so pretty. So I only created one look with this, but I absolutely loved it. I thought all the shadows performed really well. We're very pigmented, blended nicely. So this is definitely a really nice palette that I'm happy to have. My last ColourPop product is a lippy pencil. This is in the shade Little One. I'm wearing it today. I have three ColourPop nude lip liners. Aquarius is more pink. BFF one is more neutral, slightly like tan and then little one is more on the peachy side i've been wearing this so much i haven't sharpened it a ton for you to be able to really tell that but i've used it a lot i pulled out all three lip liners to use with my nude lip colors this fall this is one i used almost every day and here is a swatch of that i absolutely love it and colourpop lip liners are my favorite and I know that they're not everyone's cup of tea, especially if you like a more drying lip liner. If you like NYX wooden lip pencils or MAC wooden lip pencils, those I cannot get down with. They're so drying for me. I cannot stand them. These are much more creamy. So creamy in fact that you can use these to fill in your lips completely and it doesn't feel like really thick and cakey, which is what I love but I do think it helps to hold my lip product in place. If you use something more drying or more sticky, would it do a better job? Probably, but luckily for me, I don't have that much of an issue with lip color traveling. I just use lip liner to help me stay in the lines, basically. I love this shade, love this formula, highly, highly recommend. And my other two lip products that I fell in love with would be two limited edition shades of the Buxom Full On Lip Creams. These were from their fall collection. They had two lip polishes and two lip creams. I picked up the lip creams and in love. Buxom glosses are incredible to begin with, but these shades I'm so happy that I got because I haven't purchased from many of their limited edition collections before and I've wished that I had. Since I'm so used to being able to get these glosses half off of the 21 Days of Beauty, to just get them full price or with a 20% off coupon is just hard for me to do. But now that we haven't had an ultra 20% off coupon all year, I I'm probably going to be more okay with those. So anyway, 
The first shade is a spiked apple cider, which is definitely the more pinky shade of the two. So pretty. And the other one is pumpkin spice latte, which is the more warm tone color. So there are those two shades. They're looking very similar here, but you can see more pink, more warm. These also, oh, I almost got on my nose. These also smell like what their names are, which is really cool. I love that touch. And they still have the same tingle as the Buxom glosses. As you can see, they have like a light medium opacity. They can be a little bit sticky, but I don't mind. They have a beautiful amount of shine to lips that make your lips look fuller. Love this formula and I'm so happy to add these shades to my collection. I have Buxom White Russian, but I really don't wear it a ton because it's very light and these are some great like more wearable nude shades for me in a formula that I love. And the rest of my beauty favorites are a bunch of nail polishes. First would be the polishes I have from Life Lacquer. I bought these last Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and I didn't wear them until now because these are fall colors for me. I'm going to be popping up some manicure monday pictures on the screen so you guys can see what these look like on my nails so this first one is the shade girl power it is a super unique shade this is more of a topper i did apply this on its own i did three coats and it was mostly opaque i wasn't willing to go up to four it did wear nicely it did dry down nicely but it's definitely more of a topper which is why one day i did apply this over top of one nail on top of the color 11, which is a very interesting yellowy green color. Not my normal shade, but I actually really liked it. My sister and my husband didn't like this kind of color. You know, I, this is not for everyone, but I liked it. It was a really good formula. And then I wore these two shades together. And that would be Cold Turkey and Jeffa. Cold Turkey is more blue, Jeffa is more green, and they both have like a dusty quality to them, which is so beautiful. Like I said, I wore those together. I loved Kale Polish. I have so many shades from them. I have a lot more in this video, so I was happy to see that I did like the formula of Kathleen's new nail polish line. I have a few more colors that I'm wanting to get from her Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. It just depends what it is and if the shades are in stock. Honestly, like this collection was the first collection and it was the best collection in my opinion. Since then, there were like a few shades from the nude collection and the emerald color that I want, but the rest of them, no. oh, and a shade from the Xenon collection. I want those. Everything else, I just was like bummed and like don't care about. I get she can't just copy all of her Kale Paula shades. I wouldn't be mad at it, but I get that she can't do that. So yeah, unfortunately, every time she's had a sale, not all the shades I want are in stock, so hopefully they will restock and I would love to get some more, but I'm looking forward to more collections from her in the future because I do like that formula. Speaking of another indie polish brand that I love, that would be 90 Lacquer. So I've talked about them a bunch on my channel. Jess makes amazing, amazing nail polishes. And I tried all four of these shades for the first time this First one is from the Animal Crossing collection. I don't play that game. I don't know nothing about it. I'm not a video game person. This is Fortune Telling Feline. A really pretty purple. And this was fun for me to wear for fall because it's not my typical fall shade. But I did wear it in September. I wore it at the beginning. No, did I? I actually may have worn it in October. I don't remember. But I liked it. It was pretty. And it was a nice change up from the other colors I was wearing like these, which are very traditional fall shades that, again, I bought these last Black Friday, Cyber Monday, hadn't worn them at all until this fall. So beautiful. This first one is Mulled Wine. It's such a unique color with those beautiful flashes in it. I do not wear vampy polish. I don't like the way it looks on my nails, but I really, really love this one. I thought it looked so beautiful, especially in person. Then we have this color Decay, which is a very swampy, dirty dark olive green color that has some shimmer in it. it was very pretty as well it didn't photograph as nice as it looks in person but it was very pretty and then of course this one was my favorite this is maple it's a beautiful very bright metallic orange color i love this so so much all of those had a really great formula 
love justice polishes absolutely would recommend them and she does a great job of coming out with some awesome unique shades and then i have 12 more polishes that i wore and that i love so i have so many fall polishes i mean my fall makeup must-haves was a big long video and because of corona I was not able to wear all the products that I wanted to, but I really wanted to wear my nail polishes. So I was inspired by Kelly Gooch to do like a multicolored manicure. And that is what I did. I used similar shades and I'm not like obsessed with all of the combos I did, like the one I'm wearing today, but I am a very like anal person. So for me to be doing these combos in the first place, I was like, whoa, look at me go. So. Thank you, Kelly Gooch, for the inspiration. I did see some other people do it as well, but Kelly was my main inspiration for this. And I'm so happy because like I said, it helped me use a lot more of my polishes because all of these are favorites of mine and I want to get use out of them. And I don't want to change my nails every other day. I just don't, I just, it, it takes too much time and patience and just no. So the way that I did this, which I think is how Kelly Gooch did it, I'm not 100% sure. So my middle fit girl, my thumb on my middle finger and my pinky are all the same color and then the index finger and the ring finger are different shades so for my main color i am wearing nails ink chai kiss i don't have a ton of polishes from nails ink but this was a great formula it was a little bit thicker but easier to apply it was opaque in just two coats and it's just a unique color for me i really like it then on my pointer finger, this is the color I bought because LS had featured this. I want to say in a nail polish to clutter. I bought it from eBay and it's ancient, but it works fine for me. And this is OPI Ginger Bells. This one took three coats to be opaque, which is fine. And on my ring finger, we have one of my favorite metallics ever. This is OPI Worth a Pretty Penne, which is like a coppery rose gold color. So there are what all of the shades look like together. I'm not obsessed because I think this one really stands out, but I didn't want to just have these two because I thought that might be too similar, but I'm happy with it. This is gonna be my Thanksgiving manicure. It, it feels Thanksgiving to me. I like it. And then the rest of the manicures are using all fall polishes. So I have got one that's all cream, one that's all metallic, and then one that's all olive tones. So for my all cream manicure, I use Caramello, Taurus, and Miami Fever. For my all metallic manicure, I use Prince Cornelius, Princess Penny, and Leo. And then for my all olive manicure, I use Medusa, Chloe, and Mother of Dragons. So oh, I just loved them all so much and I'm so happy that I did that because it was a great way for me to get use out of more of my nail polishes without having to change my nail color a whole bunch. So I was really happy with that. So those are all my beauty favorites. I only had one random favorite and that would be Worst Cooks of America. I've been loving that show and luckily on Xfinity On Demand, I'm able to watch old seasons. So I think they're currently on season 20 and I'm all the way on season five. I've been working backwards. One of the seasons is missing from Xfinity On Demand, which is a shame. I'm sure it's the celebrity season, which are the most fun to watch for me, but I love that show. I'm not good at cooking. I've learned a lot. I have not put any of it into action, but for some reason that show is so interesting, but I don't watch any other cooking shows. The reason I get into this is because of the celebrity one. So let me know if there are other cooking shows that are similar that you think I might like if you like Worst Cooks in America. So now I want to include the clip of our gender reveal. It's only like a minute and a half or so, but here we go. So as you can tell by our reactions, I was hoping for a girl, Justin was hoping for a boy. I told myself that like, 
either way I'll be fine and like I will be fine. I didn't really know that I had that much of a preference but as you can tell by my reaction I guess I really wanted a girl and that's just because I'm like what am I gonna do with a boy but I am more than happy and willing to be going to all those sport games be all up in it i'm not gonna know what is going on but i'm gonna be there and i'm gonna be cheering i'm gonna have the snacks i'm gonna have the water i'm going to be there but it's just like crazy to think about me being a boy mom but honestly being a mom in general this is like really made it real to us that now we finally know the gender we've had the name picked out for a long time i've wanted that i've i've known that i've wanted this name for forever so I'm excited about that. I'll let you guys know the name as we get like closer to delivery, but I am 19 weeks as of yesterday. So that's just like really crazy. I'm almost halfway there. Next week, of course, will be our appointment where we're getting to see the anatomy scan and everything. So that's very exciting. So as far as symptoms that I'm having, acid reflux, heartburn, this is kind of graphic, but I feel like my pubic bones are like already expanding or something. It's like after I've been sitting down for a while and I stand up, it feels like I'm very sore, like I've been doing lots of exercise, but I certainly have not. Um, so that's kind of weird, but those are the only symptoms I'm having. I'm having no cravings at all. I've not started wanting to eat more than normal, but no cravings whatsoever. My acne is out of control. I feel like I've had bad acne all year, but yeah, like it's... It's out of control, but that's it. I'm super lucky so far. I had a lot of nausea at the beginning, but no morning sickness, no vomiting, which is fantastic. I'm so fortunate in that area. And I'm hoping I get just as lucky during the birth because I'm such a big baby that like, I don't know, we'll see how that's gonna go. But like, it kind of like freaked me out yesterday. I'm like, I am not ready. I'm not ready at all. I have done zero research. We have not prepped anything. We haven't purchased anything and this first half went so fast the second half is going to go just as fast I am due April 16th and luckily my work from home period has already been extended like everybody's at the office has until March I've already gotten the clearance to be able to work from home through the end of my pregnancy which is awesome and then I'll go on maternity leave so I'm super fortunate in that way and I have a couple people that I've been following online honestly I've just been following them in general and then they've started to post more mom content and I love it so Danny Austin and Callie Blanchefort Blanchefort I have no idea how to say her name I'm gonna have both of them linked down below both of them have been very like real about motherhood and about childbirth and they both have been able to share like the best things to buy which has been so helpful some of the things are very expensive but like I would love to know from you guys some things that have been like game changers for you either in your pregnancy, like newborn must haves, hospital must haves, anything that you guys recommend like product wise, let me know. I'm needing to buy a pregnancy pillow finally because I sleep on my stomach. So I'm needing to buy one of those. Let me know if you guys have a good recommendation for a lotion for stretch marks. Again, I'm not having any yet. Um, but I want to try to be preventative. And here I am looking different. So after I finished filming my video, I actually remembered a lot more things that I wanted to share with you. And I took a shower, I've got fresh hair, still wet, and I put on makeup to film a second video, but I wanted to pop back in to share a few more things. And the first thing is a product that I actually should have mentioned as a fall favorite. And this is a spot trim that has actually been working for me and I believe is safe for pregnant people because it does not have salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide. So this is the anti-blemish spot treatment from the brand Lemongrass Spa. I will have this linked down below and basically my mom and my sister had a party and I wanted to just buy some things to support them. I honestly did not think that this was going to be great. I did not have high hopes for it. I'm not really into like natural things. So I was really surprised with how well this has worked for me. And I am still getting new breakouts all the time, but this has really helped reduce the size of them and eventually like help them go away, which is fantastic. I've really honest to God, noticed more with this spot treatment than I have with any other spot treatment I've ever used. So there are, you know, quite a few ingredients in here. So the first ingredient is water, then there's witch hazel, which I know there's like mixed reviews on witch hazel, willow bark, aloe vera, 
and then like a couple other random ingredients, but it's working really, really well for me. So I definitely wanted to recommend this to you guys. And again, I've had acne all year, but especially hormonal acne, like right here, I got a lot going on and this has done a great job. So I did want to mention that. And then a couple other symptoms I've been having that I forgot to mention. I don't necessarily know that these are symptoms. I guess these are just things that people go through when they're pregnant, which I guess would then be a symptom. I don't know. I've never been pregnant before. So the first thing would be like emotions are all over the place. So I am crying a lot more at random things or like little things that are making me upset. I'm just like bawling my eyes out. So that's like kind of to be expected, but I'm also getting like angry quicker. I'm not wanting to put up with a bunch of BS. And unfortunately this has mostly just come out towards Justin, but even some things at work, not that I'm coming out in an angry way towards my coworkers. It's just that there are like some things that like clients are doing that I'm like, nope, this is what we're doing. That is not okay. We're not putting up with this BS. So who knows in the, in some weird way that like might be good for me because I'm quite a pushover and I'm a big softie. So I'm going to try to take a positive out of it, but I definitely need to make sure I'm not just like targeting this anger towards Justin and that I'm like harnessing it. But yeah, my emotions are definitely all over the place. And I already feel like my boobs have gotten bigger. It could be in my head. It might just be, be because they're like more tender and softer, but they definitely feel like they're getting bigger to me. They're, they are a lot more tender. They look different and weird. I don't want to describe it in case that's very gross to you guys, but like, I feel like the color looks a little bit different. The, you know, texture of my skin. I don't know, it, it looks different. It looks gross to me. It doesn't always look gross. I just, some days I'm just like, oh, like is different. It's a change and it looks gross, but those are like the main things that I've noticed. And then I wanted to ask a couple more recommendations and one of them would be a bralette. So because I'm working from home, I actually am on video chat like all day long, but like I'm not wearing a bra right now. Can you tell? I don't think so because you know, the camera stops right here and the same with my work computer camera. So I just haven't been wearing a bra much. And I don't know if this is because my boobs are getting bigger or because of the size they already are or because of my acid reflux but at night sometimes i just like pull my boobs apart and i'm just like Ugh. and i don't know they just feel like they're weighing heavier on me so i would like to buy some bralettes i've never bought them before because i always felt like my chest was too big for them i'm a c but i would definitely like to buy them again i'm i'm going to be working from home through april so i think it would be a worthy investment for me to have something that I can wear during the day at night as well that is comfortable for me. So if you guys can recommend like specific bralettes or good brands to look for for bralettes that can give you some support, that would be great. I don't want them just be cute like I'm wearing them under clothes. I would like it to be comfortable, give me a little support. So I would love your recommendations with that. And I also wanted to talk about the pregnancy clothes that I've purchased, what I think of them, and then I would like to get your all's recommendations as well. Luckily, because I'm working from home, I'm wearing pajamas a lot, so I don't feel a need to go out and buy a bunch of pregnancy clothes, but I did want to get some staples. So, so far I've purchased some things from Target and Kohl's. The Target things I haven't worn yet, I did buy a short sleeve like olive green knee length dress which is really cute and then i bought a more like dusty blue and an olive t-shirt that of course has um like the ruching on the sides to help it look fitted but also like grow to your belly so i need to use those and i'll definitely get back to you with my thoughts on those clothes but then the things that I got from Kohl's are what I've worn most often so I got the aglow t-shirts so they're not like sleeves that come up to here they're a little bit longer they don't go all the way to your elbow but like a little bit longer I don't love that but at the same time it'll probably be better for me when my arms get a little bigger so I just got white and black of those because that's gonna wear most often again especially this time of year under 
cardigans like what I'm wearing right now, although this is just like a regular t-shirt. And then I bought some Aglow pregnancy jeans. I bought two different styles and I got size 10 and 12. And I've been fitting myself into these size eight American Eagle jeans for a while, but I, this past year have needed to go up to a 10 anyway. So I got 10 in the jeans and they fit my legs perfectly, but I have such a flat butt that it'd be saggy in the back and I hate that. I'm always like pulling them up. And again, my belly's not huge. So I think once it is, that will help them stay up a little bit better. But of course I can't really wear a belt with those pants, but it's, they're super comfortable. I love the style of them. So I will have them down below in case you're interested. The other jeans I just got, I haven't worn them yet. So that was exciting. The pregnancy selection is so small, which like people are always pregnant. So I think that's super lame. I feel like some companies, you know, like motherhood maternity could like really make a lot of money off that, especially right now. Like everybody's getting pregnant right now. So anyway, those are all of the clothes that I have right now. So I would love to know your recommendations for specific clothes that you love or brands. I've never purchased any clothes off Amazon, but I've heard a lot of people really like it. So I would just love to know your recommendations for pregnancy clothes, for bralettes. I would like your recommendation for lotion for stretch marks, for pregnancy pillows, for any like books or podcasts or bloggers that you think would be really helpful to follow. Any of that, I would love your recommendations and I'm happy I jumped in to give you guys a little bit more information. Sorry that like this portion is gonna be all over the place, but that's just how it is. So thank you all for watching now into the outro. So anyway, I feel like I'm rambling. I did not prepare at all how I was gonna talk about this, but I'm doing good. Thank you all so much for everyone that has been asking. I really appreciate it. We are almost halfway there and I will continue to update you guys once in a while on YouTube. I'll update you a little bit on Instagram. Really, I don't have like that many things to update on. I think after I have the baby, I'll have more things to share with you. But let me know what kind of content you would like to see or if we should do like a Q&A. In general, I haven't done one in a couple years. So I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> Please leave your advice down below. Definitely your product recommendations. That will be so, so helpful. And I want to thank you all so, so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.